Hi, this is Pastors Todd and Katie Holmes from the River of Tri-Cities Church, and we want to say thank you so much for watching today. We know that the presence of God is going to come from here into your home, and you are going to be changed today in His presence. And we would love it, of course, if you could come see us in person. We'd Absolutely. love to be able to meet you. And it's just, we're so excited about what God is doing. And we believe that as you're, t as you're watching, God is going to touch you. He's going to make your, himself real to you. He's going to show you the wonderful plan that he has for your life. And so we'd be so honored if you could, you know, come and, and reach out to us, come in person, whatever it is. And we would love the opportunity to meet you and to also pray with you. So be blessed. Amen. If at any time during the broadcast you'd like prayer, call the number on the screen. We have people that are ready to pray for you. God bless you. Now here comes the service at you. How to connect the promises of God to my life. Sometimes people, wonderful people, good people, Christians, even, even people that say, you know, I, have the, I, have the, I know I have the Spirit of God living in me. I have the fruit of the Spirit in my life. I, I you know, I, I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven and everything, but I, I find difficulty in, in applying the Word to my life and, and, and seeing it happen. We have to continue to grow in the things of God. Therefore, you have to stay in the Word and you have to allow God to keep speaking to you. Keep opening your eyes more. Don't look at what the Word says and, and ever say, uh, yeah, I, I know that. I've already, I've already got that. I already read that before. And I, I feel like every time I open the Word of God, it explodes for me. God says, let me show you something that's going to blow you away today. Let me show you something about myself that will leave you with your mouth wide open. And if you don't have those times, you're not getting deep enough in the Word. You're just spending superficial time. And therefore, you walk away and you're still hungry. Because it's not, it's not the amount, it's, it's not just that you took the time to, to read the Word, you took the time to pray. But you have, to, you have to make sure that you are getting in the presence of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go, and I'm reading it slow because I'm trying to see the words. When he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. Say obey. 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 A lot of times we don't like that word, obey. But I want to tell you, actually, God has made us as humans. You're going to serve somebody. But you have to make a decision, who am I going to follow? Abraham decided he was going to follow God. And he was going to receive an inheritance from him, but he had to obey. And he went out not knowing where he went. He didn't even know where he was going. Huh? Well, what am I doing? Anybody ever ask yourself that question? What in the world am I doing? God speaks to you. He tells you to do something. You start doing that, and all of a sudden you'll ask yourself, what in the world am I doing? Where am I going? Because your head will say, what are you doing? You're crazy. And God speaks to you. He tells you to do this. He'll tell you to go out and go, go talk to that person over there. Preacher. Yeah, that's why God sent you. You just happen to be somewhere, and someone else is there, and there's something that they need help with. And God divinely puts you in their path, and you find yourself talking to them, and out of you begins to flow the power of God and the Word of God and hope and strength. And, and life begins to come to them and they're like whoa I'm glad I met you I'm glad I talked with you thank you so much thank you I needed that so much 
Will you be willing to go where God sends you? Sometimes you find yourself, you don't even know why you're where you are. God has a plan. Sometimes God's promised something and you think, I don't know how that could ever happen. I'm not, on even, I'm not even on a path that goes in that direction. That's how it is for some people here today. God has spoken some things to your heart. You haven't even told anybody about it. And you think, I don't know how that's going to happen. Because I, that's not even inside of me. God's waiting. And when it starts to come out of your mouth and you begin to walk in that direction, everything will happen. Everything will, everything will come to pass. Everything will come to pass. He's put some stuff inside of you, though. And as you begin to open your mouth and you begin to speak those things out, something will begin to turn inside of you. He calls you an overcomer. That's who you are to him. You say, well, my life doesn't look like I'm overcoming. Well, if you will begin to obey the plan of God, and you will stop talking about doubt and failure and mistakes. Because that's, that's the thing that most people, they magnify that in their life. You can even find born-again, spirit-filled believers. And you look at the, like the things that they put out there in public, like their posts and things like that. And all it is is, is, is all the things that went wrong. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Abraham understood that principle. He understood that principle. That whatever it is that God says about me, that's who I am. Amen. And so in Romans 4, 17, when it says, you know, when God called him a father of many nations, Abraham stood, it said there, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And so you might say, well, that's dead in my life. That can't happen anymore. Who says that? God makes alive dead things. You might say, well, that's, that, that chapter is closed. That, there's no chance of that happening now. I, I did this. I ruined it. I burned my bridges. That thing doesn't exist anymore. I let it go. I gave it up. I messed it up. Well, can you trust God to perform his word to you? Because God, who quickens the dead, calls those things that be not as though they are. So Abraham not only stood before God and believed him, he acted like God was called by God by calling those things which are not as though they were. And so he did what God did. He didn't just say, God, you're doing it. Abraham said, I'm going to do what God's doing. I do what God does. And if you do what God does, then you'll see what God sees. And those things will begin to come out of your life there. And since Abraham is a father of faith, we need to do the same thing that he did. Amen? That's what the Bible says. I mean, we're, we're all created in God's image. It talks about in Colossians 3.10. And so if Abraham did what God did and we follow Father Abraham, amen, then we're going to see those same type of things take place in our life. The blessing of the Lord over taking us because we're told to be imitators of God also. Amen. Everything you look, God's spoken into existence. This, come, be, whatever it is. What is it in your life that doesn't exist that God says, this is my plan for your life? you got to begin speaking it. And you can't speak garbage. You have to speak, this is the word, this is the truth, because there's power in that. Stop, stop just talking a bunch of drivel. Start talking with power and with authority. This is the way my life is going to be. This is what's going to take place in my life. Because this is what the Word of God says to me. God always operates that way. He speaks things into being. He speaks things into being. He taught Abraham, speak things into being. And, and so he showed him how to connect with the, with the blessing because he called himself blessed. Abraham called himself blessed. This is, what, this is what you have to do. It doesn't matter if anybody likes it or not. You tell people, oh, you know, I, I live a very blessed life. I'm the blessed of the Lord. 
I'm not saying that's how you greet everybody. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm blessed of God. I'm blessed of God. I'm blessed of God. I'm blessed of God. Because, because it can be just like stuff that rolls off of your tongue and, and it means nothing to you. And so I'm not talking about just, you know, just, just saying something to be saying because some people just, sometimes you just need to shut up. Some people just talk too much. But when you do talk, your words need to be powerful words. They need to be creative words. They need to be words that are focused on a goal that God has given you. And you can say, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. And it will continue to grow. What God has put inside of me will continue to produce. Amen? And then you've got to let, you've got to let the word of God take over your mind. You have to focus. You have to believe. You have to think the word. Amen? You have to meditate on, on God's word. It says in Romans 4, 19 through 21, being not weak in faith, Abraham considered not his own body. Consider. How many of you have ever considered something? Where do you consider something? What part of your body considers things? Right here. Well, you know, hey, would you do this? Uh, I'll consider it. What's that mean? I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it. And so it said here, Abraham considered not his own body. Well, that, what else do you have? This is all I got. God says, God says I'm a father of many nations. That out of me is going to come forth a child. Has to be a male child also. Amen. Well, so sometimes you've got to You've got to get out of your mind the facts. All of the facts, you have to let them leave your mind. Considered not his own body, now dead. Well, that's quite a consideration. Oh, so you're going to use that. That's, there's no life there. That, ain't, that doesn't work anymore. Yeah, that's, that's not working. That's not, but that's what God said. That, but that's not working. And so you've got to come to a place where you consider not those things that seem to be the only thing that God could use. Oh, so what am I going to do? Well, you're going to believe God. When he was about 100 years old, and then not only that, neither did he, neither yet did the deadness of Sarah's womb. So... Realizing it takes two people to make a child. I'm going to say that for the benefit of those who might be watching from some other place. <laughs> it takes two people to make a child. One man, one woman. One with spout, one without. It's the only way it happens. No other way. But he had to believe God not considering the deadness of his body, nor the barrenness of his wife's womb, and he staggered not at the promise. Staggering. Like, whoa, oh my gosh. How, how could you do that, God? Because doubt and unbelief causes you to step back. That's what staggering is. Like, whoa. Staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. If someone, when the word of God comes to them, they, they step back and they go, well, there, there's no. Mm, that's unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being then fully persuaded. Fully. That was what took over. When you're full, you're full. And he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform it. What God had promised, he was able to perform it. Now, Abraham was tested in that, thinking that I've got to do this. That's where he got off track. That's where Ishmael came from. When Abram thought, I have to make this. Somehow or another, it's up to me. No, no, no. God's word is up to him to perform. So when God speaks to you and he says, this is the way things are going to be, it's up to God to bring his word to pass in your life. 
God, you will do it. You will do it. River of Tri-Cities in Bristol. That's up to God to bring it on. Amen. Amen. He'll use people. And if you can help next week, come let Pastor Gary know. They need some help. Amen. People who roll up their sleeves and say, hey, let's get some work done here. Amen. But this is what God promises. And when God says this is what it's going to be, then you just say, absolutely, Lord. I, I, I'm good with that. Abraham didn't focus on his negative circumstances. Abraham did not focus on his negative circumstances. And so there might be somebody here, you have a negative circumstance. Maybe you have a couple. And God has said, this is what I'm going to do. And you're looking like, oh, yeah, right. I don't know how that's going to happen, God. It doesn't look that way right now. He didn't meditate on the lack, on the deadness, on the barrenness. He fixed his mind instead on the promises of God. Amen? He meditated on the blessing, and the blessing controlled his mind then. That's all he thought on. When there would come a thought of something else, he would push that aside, say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to think on that at all. It was, he, he, he was thinking, his thinking was so dominated and controlled and saturated with the, the blessing of the Lord. Look at over at Hebrews 11 here. And God told him to sacrifice Isaac. When God said that, he didn't even think anything of it. He goes, okay, whatever. It says Hebrews 11, 17, by faith Abraham, when he was tried, when he was tested, he offered up Isaac and that he had, and he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. And so Abraham's attitude here was amazing because he didn't, he didn't even know what we know about God, that God was able to raise the dead. He'd never seen that happened before. A lot of times you can look at somebody, if they promise you something, you can look at their track record and you say, oh, I see that they've done that. We can do that now with God. We can see that God can raise the dead. Amen. We see that God, you, you do raise the dead. You are that person. You are that God who, who raises the dead. Abraham never seen that before, but God said, this is what, this is what it's going to happen. And so it didn't matter the way things seemed. All that mattered was God's word. And so I ask you, what is it that is too big in your life right now that you think, ah, oh, that can never happen? Because God says, I'm going to make it happen. He expected the impossible to happen. He expected the impossible to happen. And if Abraham could do that, well, why can't we? How much more actually should we? I believe that the impossible is getting ready to happen. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen today. This week, in the name of Jesus... The impossible is going to happen. I don't look at anything else. I know what God says, and this is, this is what God says. Why? Because I have the mind of Christ. I'm not crazy. I know what the word of God is. He says I have the mind of Christ in 1 Corinthians 2.16. That, that's, that's, that's the word. That's mine. I'm not a crazy person. I think the thoughts of God. And so when I say things, it, I, I might sound like, I might sound like, wow, you're really stretching it. But actually, I'm just speaking in line with the mind of Christ. And I know what's mine. Amen? And so when I, when I have my mind controlled by the Word of God, then I start calling those things that are not as though they were. So then you really look crazy to the outside. People are like, Whoa. You said that's working. Yeah, everything's working. Everything's right. You've got to begin to call things that are not as though they are. Amen. You've got to start calling those things that are not, that be not as though they were. Amen. This is it. This is how I speak. And then you act on 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, I bring into thought, in every thought, excuse me, into captivity. To the obedience of Christ. And so I began to speak and I began to declare and decree things that even though they're not right now, I speak it as though they were. I speak it as though they were. So all of those, all of those blessings in, in, um, that Abraham 
new were his in Deuteronomy chapter 28, those blessings are mine. If they were for Abraham, then they're for mine right now. And so, and so it says, and it will come to pass, if thou wilt diligently, hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, this is Hebrews 28, 1, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They will come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Those blessings are mine. And so you actually have to kind of get out from where you are and you have to start looking for what God has for you because it's bigger than where you are right now. I'm telling you people, please listen. What I'm telling you, what God has for you is greater than where you are right now. It's, there's more. There is, there is more. There is more. You say, well, how much more? So much more. So much more that you go, yes, Lord. But you won't stagger back. Instead, you'll run to it. Yes, that's mine. I've seen this. This is mine. And then you've got to lay hold of it. You say, well, I, I don't think I can. Yes, you can. Well, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't look possible. It doesn't matter how it looks. Nothing in the natural is as it appears. Nothing in the natural is as it appears. To God, he doesn't look at the natural situation. He doesn't even look at the, at the outward appearance. He looks on the heart. And he sees something totally different. Because the outward appearance will fool you, especially in this day and age where there's so much deception going on. And you'll have the media telling you one thing. You'll have the government telling you something different. You'll have the, 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 the Department of, of, of Health, whoever's in control of that anymore, who knows. And, you know, they're telling you something completely different. And, and you're like, well, how could anything work? Doesn't matter. Just do what God says. Do what God says and don't listen to all those other voices. Obey God. And let God show you what he has for you. Let him open up to you all that he has. And don't think, that's too much. There's no possible way. How could that ever happen? Well, I don't have enough. Don't let those words come out of your mouth. I don't have enough. I said, don't let those words come out of your mouth. I don't have enough. Or that's broken. Or that's dead. Or that's gone. It's past. That can't happen anymore. Shh, 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 shh. You need, you need a good friend of yours. Just, just, just a good friend.
were up in a when we were up in Alaska just a, a few weeks ago, and um, Katie's stepmom is the the mayor of the the borough there, uh, the Matsu district, and it's about the size of West Virginia. And they're believing for just a supernatural move of God in that area. And as we were talking to, her, you know, her and, and and then Katie's dad, you know, at the same time, and and. Um, and, and, and she's, she's got great faith in just going out there and believing, and this is the way it's going to happen, bah, 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 and this is, what, this is all I say. And so I would, you know, and we would begin to ask, well, what, what's happening in this situation here? And she would begin to say, and, and then sometimes your dad would interject a little something. He goes, yeah, if we can get the, those crazy people out of office that are in there. And then she goes, no, 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 dear, 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 dear. No, shh, shh, shh. we don't say that. Because it really doesn't matter who's in any office. That's our thoughts. God can't do it unless he gets somebody else in office. Oh, so you think you're telling me God's limited because of a person? Are you, are you really that dense? Do you really think that God is hindered by some man who says, I don't want to do that? God say, I'll take you out right there. Don't ever think God can't do something because of somebody or some situation or some circumstance. God, God will do whatever his word says he will do. And if he says, I want to use you and I want you to do this, go. Then you just, yes, sir, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to do this. Somebody else will say, well, you can't do that. Do you not understand what, what's, what, what you have to work with? doesn't matter what I have to work with. doesn't matter what I have to work with. If I obey, that is the principal thing. Abraham just obeyed. And he, he left with nothing. He left Nahor with nothing. And God made of him, because he walked by faith, a great nation. What, cannot, what can God not do through you? The only reason, the only limitation God has is you in your own life. When you decide, well, I don't want to do that. I'll say, all right, well, I'll, I'll use this person then. I will, find, I will find a person of faith. And I want to tell you here in this Tri-Cities area, I'll close this up here. We have many people of faith. We have some people in this body here, some great faith, supernatural faith. This family here, taking Bristol in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No, 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 we'll, we'll try. No, 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 don't try anything. Faith doesn't try anything. Faith just says this is the way it's going to be. Here we go. Amen. Broken toe or not, we're going for it. Amen. She fell off a ladder. She's trying to work and... Amen. Just takes a lick and keeps on ticking. Amen. You know, sometimes people will go through things and they'll, they'll encounter difficulties or, oh, I didn't expect I'd have to go through that. Oh, that's too uh, tough. I, I give up. I'll back off. No. Push it. Go for it. Take the land. This is yours. And it will increase. You'll see increase. You'll see blessing. You'll see the fruitfulness come forth. Does it, the faith doesn't make things easy. It makes it possible where it was impossible. So you've got to dig yourself in and say, I'm going to make this happen through doing whatever it is that God tells me to do. You don't have to do anything else, but you do have to do what he tells you. But God has something for every single person here that's going to blow you away. If you, by faith, will just obey him. Amen. And you will see the blessings of Abraham. And you'll see the blessings that are spoken of there. In Deuteronomy 28, but throughout the whole word of God, you'll see them come to pass in your life. Go forward, doubting nothing. Go forward, doubting nothing. Doubting nothing. What's God said? Stop asking God if he sees your checkbook. If he sees your balance. Stop asking God, God, do you not know who I work with? 
God, do you not know my family? God, do you not know I don't have that degree? Do you know, God, that that's not my specialty? Do you know, God, that that wasn't my plan? Do you know, God, that I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really even thinking about that? That's why you know it's not you. That thought didn't originate with you. Sometimes you'll be surprised at the things that come out of your mouth. No, oh, yeah, I, I've been so surprised sometimes at the things that come out of my mouth. I hear myself saying them and I think, what did I just say? God, you tricked me. I was just in the flow and I was enjoying your presence and I began to speak by the Spirit of God and all of a sudden I'm going, oh, wait, 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 come backwards. I've heard myself say some things and I've wondered one time, sometimes like, how's that going to happen? God said, all I needed you to do is just open your mouth and begin to speak on my behalf. And you have, like your father, you have creative ability in you. And that creative ability begins by you speaking in line with the plan of God for your life. Stop talking about all of the junk. Well, that doesn't look like it would work because this, 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 this. You can have all kinds of excuses. Get rid of the excuses. Get rid of the excuses. Cherie, what is it that you said was an excuse? A well-planned lie. Amen. It either comes from the devil or from yourself. An excuse is a well-planned lie. Because you think about it and you actually, you actually plan on how to make the excuse work for you. And you set yourself up so that you live the excuse. I am the excuse. No, that's not what God says. God says this. Well, I, this is the way it is. Yeah, you plan. Because if it's not of him, it's a lie. I don't care if it's the way things look. If it's not of God, it's a lie. Because he is truth. Well, now we're scratching in somebody's kitty litter box. Oh, well planned. Thank you for that, Cherie. So true. We, we've, we've planned our lives many times based on the lie that we don't have enough. On the lie that we can't do this, on the lie that I don't have experience, I don't have a degree, I don't come from the right family, I, I don't have the perfect surroundings, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. It's a lie. He hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So what's left? Nothing. Half given, already done, it's yours. And so any excuse is actually a lie. And you say, I, I can't do that. I, I don't have that. Yeah, yeah, you do. Stop lying. Stop lying. I challenge you to tell somebody that in the body of Christ when they give an excuse for not doing what the plan of God is. Stop lying. <laughs> Stop that lying right now. Stop lying. Get in line with the Word of God and obey. Some of you shaking your heads at that right now. Like, oh, I don't want to hear that. Oh, you're going to hear it now. You're going to hear it. Stop it. And it'll probably come with some Tennessee twang too. You stop that lying. <laughs> that lying. Amen. Believe God. Whatever God says, you can do it. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you will. Amen. It won't be a try. It's just doing it. I'm going to do this in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, Father God, your word has changed our lives and it's changed our future because we are walking into the greater things that you have for us. And we praise you now, Father, for manifesting your word in our lives. We do not make any excuse. We just obey. We just press in and we say, Lord, whatever it is that you say, this is the way it's going to be. You call those things that are not as though they were. Call those things that are not. So it doesn't matter if they are not right now. They're going to be. 
because you speak those things that are not as though they were in the name of Jesus. I plan to succeed. I plan to overcome. I plan to increase. What is your plan for increase? Let me ask that to you right now. What is your plan for increase? What is your plan for blessing? And you say, well, brother, I know I heard your message and that's good, but I don't believe it. Well, you don't have to participate in it. Nobody's, nobody's twisting your arm to, to be blessed, okay? Nobody's twisting your arm. You have to do this. No, you don't. You can stay in a pattern of barrenness, a pattern of lack, a pattern of excuses, a pattern of mess. You can stay there. You'll just keep going in the same cycle. Keep saying the same thing. Keep going past the same dead possum on the road. This is the same thing. It's the way I always go. Or you can hear what God says and God says, all right, let, let's get off this path here. This is what you need to do. And you begin to obey God and you begin to see things. And you'll see things that God spoke. And when you see something, you'll know, oh, hey, hey, hey. That brings back a memory. What will it bring a memory of? Of the Word of God to you. Oh, now I'm seeing what His Word said. Oh my gosh. You may not possess it yet, but you see it. Oh, this is what God has for me. And you'll know it in your heart. That's mine. You'll know in your heart. That's mine right there. That's why when we, we've for years taken, taken people to the nations. They said, you know, I've, got a, I've really got something in my heart. You need to go there. You need to go there. You need to get your feet on the ground. And you need to see it. And when you see it, Something's going to erupt inside of you. You know, that's my nation right there. This is my nation. God will give you a community. God will put in your hands whatever it is that he says you can have. And, none, and God's not bothered by you being blessed. As long as the blessing doesn't control you, what he blesses you with, doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't, you know, direct what you're going to do. You stay following God. God doesn't, doesn't care about you having, you know, whatever it is that, that is needed in your life. Whatever it is that's desired in your life. God will bless you with that. Amen. God's blessed my wife and I with a wonderful home. We don't stay home on Sundays. Well, we, we love this place. We just love to sit down on the deck and, and look at the mountains and everything. And hey, I know it's God's day, but, you know, we're just going to stay here. And we'll worship God in our way. No, because the Bible says, you know, for... Sake not the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some is, that have been overtaken by blessing and have been taken out by their own thoughts. And so instead, I'm just gonna give, I'm just gonna give God because I follow Him. I don't follow things. I follow I follow the plan of God. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get what I what I say. I'm gonna get what I desire actually. Not just something close to it. I'll have exactly what I desire. Amen. You'll see in a couple of weeks. I'll pull up in a vehicle. You'll see. Why? Because this is what I this is what I desire. Amen. I'm just working it out with God right now. Amen. It's what what things soever you desire. That thing doesn't control me. It's what I need. It's what I need in my life. And you say, well, you can use your faith to go to 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 obtain anything. Amen. And just because you have one thing doesn't mean, I mean, I've got, I've probably got, well, I don't know, maybe 30 Bibles. You think one's enough. I know one's enough, but I like to study and I like to find all kinds of different stuff and everything. And so I have all these. Do you feel bad having 30 Bibles when there's some people that don't have one? No. Because I use what I have. But I don't mind. I bless people with Bibles all the time. I bless them. And, and I, I have like in, incredible Bibles. You have, you have one of those Bibles there? Is this one from? No, that's not one of the ones from, from uh, there. There. This one. Here. This is one of those great Bibles. Amen. This is like $400 Bible. $500 Bible. Sorry. I got mine on sale. No. Um, <laughs> Five hundred dollars. It's a very nice Bible. It's really. It's like the best you can buy. Everything like that. And I've been blessed with them, and I've given many away. But I don't have to exercise faith 
for some things at all. Because some things, when you live the life, the blessing follows you. Please listen to me. When you begin to live the life, everywhere you go, things will flourish. And things will just come to you. Things will just, they just come to you. You don't ask for them. I don't ask for them. I just have them. She says, how'd you get that? It, it just came to me. Amen. There's so, there's so many things I don't ask God for anymore. I used to, I used, it used to be a target of my faith. Oh, Lord. I would love this. Well, what do you need it for? Maybe it just, that makes me happy. Okay, all right. If my boys ask for something, I don't have to find out from them it, what exactly what is this all about and everything. Ethan's got a birthday this week, so we ask him, you know, what do you want for your birthday? So he gives us a list of some things. I don't look at some of the stuff say, do you really need that? No, because he could probably get by in his life without it. But as a, as a good father, I want to bless my children. And so I want to know, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Even when we have guests that come, that, that minister, that stay at the house, at the mission's house, we ask them, what do you like? What, 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 makes, what makes you light up? You know, when you, if you've got something, if we gave you a gift basket, I don't want to give people a gift basket. And I spend money, and they look at it and they go, like, I don't like any of that stuff. I want when they look at it, go like, oh, that's everything I like. How do we know? As you told us. Amen. And so what we put in there, it's, it's to make you just to make things more comfortable for you. Because you're going to be working hard when you're here. Amen. When people come to be with us, they, they, they're working hard. Amen. And so as you are doing the work of the kingdom, your father has no issue whatsoever with blessing you. With whatever it is that you say, Lord, this is what I desire. It doesn't control you. And in fact, you like it so much. How many of you like things so much you'll, you'll bless somebody else with it? Amen. Have you ever bought something for somebody because, because you liked it so well and you wanted them to like it, even if it's something they've never said they wanted? He's like, I know you would like this. Lenore definitely is that type of a person. Just, I, just wanna, I just want you to experience this. Because that's the way this lady is. That's how she rolls. Amen. And when Lenore blesses you with somebody, you're like, whoa, this is incredible. That's how every single one of us should be. So blessed that it overflows out of us. Oh, this, is, this has benefited my life. This has blessed my life. I want to bless you. Amen. And then, and then your life begins to overflow with those things because you sow so much. And it just keeps coming in. Just keeps coming in. Just keeps coming in. Just, there's just a flow. Blah, 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 blah. Does God have a problem blessing a generous person? No. It triggers the blessing of the Lord. Amen. What I said, please understand. Get ready for increase. Get ready for increase. Amen. Get ready for increase. Get ready for increase. And when you guys want more property... Just say, Lord, we're ready. Just say, Lord, we're ready. Okay? Some weeks, I don't know, was, was the flood a lot? Was, was there a lot of water on your ranch farm this past week? No, you're okay? You've had those times. You've learned how to work things out now. Amen. I just heard that. When you're ready, you say, Lord, I'm ready. He'll just bless you with land. He'll just bless you with land. He'll just bless you with it. He'll just bless you. With it. You've sown. You've been diligent. You've given him. Off the top, you've been generous towards God. God says, when you're ready, just say, Lord, we're ready. Just, that's all. Lord, we're ready. Amen. And then be prepared for what he gives you. Because it'll be bigger than what you think in your mind. Because this is a God of more than enough. And when God blesses you, you go, whoa, all right, God. Yes, Lord, thank you. Because he's a big God. And he's able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all you could ask or think. According to that power right here that works in you. And you speak it out. You declare, you declare it, you decree it. In Jesus' name.
Amen. I just want to talk to you for just a moment here right now and want to give you an invitation to make a complete change in your life. As you know, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And if as you've been hearing the word of God, you feel in your heart, you know, I need to make a change right now. I need to allow God to come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. I need for things to change right now. And I want to encourage you, if that's you, would you just say this prayer with me right now? Wherever you might be, in your home or uh, maybe a hotel room or something like that, would you just pray this prayer with me right now? I want you to say it with your mouth. I want you to mean it with your heart. Just pray these words. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Wash me. Change me. Save me. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He died for my sins, but He's risen again now. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life and doing a work inside of me. Thank you for forgiving me. I love you and I trust you. I give everything to you, and I trust you now with my future. If you prayed that prayer with me right now, I want to tell you this. Your sins are forgiven of you. You are washed. You are cleansed. You are changed. You are now a Christian. And I want to encourage you, if you prayed that prayer with me, and you meant it in your heart, I'd like for you to call the number on the screen right now and talk to one of our prayer operators. Let them know about the commitment that you've just made to Jesus from your heart. We would love to be able to pray with you again about any other needs that you have in your life. We are so excited for you. This is the greatest decision you can ever make in your entire life. And I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. If you haven't been going to church anywhere, I want to give you an invitation to come in to join us, this church family, the River of Tri-Cities Church, 1005 John Exum Parkway. And I want to encourage you to come and be a part of what's happening here right now. We love you. God bless you. Hi, this is Pastor Todd, and I want to give you an opportunity to partner with us in getting the gospel out to this area here, the Tri-Cities area and beyond. And on this broadcast, we are reaching so many, many people. And I want to encourage you and give you an opportunity to participate with us in getting the gospel out. And the way that you can do that is you will see the information there on the lower third part of the screen. And you can be able to give and you can help us to be able to get the word of God out. It's free to preach the gospel, but it costs something to be able to get the gospel out. And as you give, other people will be able to receive the good news of the gospel. As you've been listening, you've been hearing great things that encourage you and help you to live a victorious Christian life. And many other people are hearing this broadcast. And so I encourage you right now, in whatever way you can, and however much the Lord will put upon your heart, if you would please just help us in being able to do this. The Word of God says, the willing and the obedient will eat of the good of the land. My desire is to see you blessed in every area of your life, and when we participate with God, the plan of God, whatever it is that God wants us to do, we're going to see the blessing of the Lord come into our lives. As we sow, you know the word God says, we're going to reap in direct proportion to the amount that we sow. And so I thank you, and I'm, I want to tell you, you sow in every area of your life, not just financially, but in every way, every day we're sowing things. But I want to give you an opportunity and encourage you, if you can help us out in being able to get the gospel, here's the instructions right below here, how you can be involved in helping us be able to take the gospel to many, many, many people in this area, and their lives will be changed forever. Thank you so much. God bless you. We wanted to invite you to listen to our podcast that we do together. It's called yes. The Last Days Podcast, and we really have a lot of fun with it. It's, of course, teaching from the Word of God, but we incorporate a lot of just fun stories and, and advice, and we really believe it'll be a great blessing to you. So you can go to Google Podcast or Apple Podcast or even Spotify and listen there, and I, I think that you'll really enjoy it, but also be very blessed. 
it's going to be absolutely incredible. Whatever platform you normally listen to podcasts on. And then we want to also tell you to watch out because we are coming to Bristol, a new location. We're so excited <laughs> about the growth that is taking place at the River of Tri-Cities Church. And we want to tell you, we're getting ready to have another campus in Bristol. And the pastors there will be Gary and Tina Frazier. It won't be my wife and I, but I want to tell you, it's going to be very powerful. So get ready. We're getting ready to announce where it's going to be. And it's coming soon up to Bristol. God bless you. Thank you.